before a researcher can responsibly infer from sample data to the wider population, they must calculate the effect size. Effect size answers an important question, not just is there a difference between the groups, the experimental and the control group, but is that difference big enough to matter? So let's say somehow you develop a magic pill that's supposed to increase intelligence. And this time around, you do the experiment right and you randomly assign participants to the experimental or the control group. So now the makeup of both of your groups is identical so that you can make comparisons. So the experimental group's gonna get your IQ drug and the control group's gonna get a placebo. You're gonna give them a 100 question test and you're gonna collect their scores. All right, let's say that the control group scores a 70 on average and the experimental group scores a 71. Is there a difference between the groups? Yes. All right, the experimental group did better. Is this difference big enough to matter? A one point difference on a hundred question test? Probably not, probably not. Now let's say instead, you didn't get these results. Let's say instead you got these results, all right? The control group scored 70 and the experimental group scored 85. That's a 15 point difference. So that difference is probably big enough to matter. There's a big effect size there compared to a small effect size here. Now let's recap. Effect size is the magnitude of difference between groups. A large effect size means that a research finding has practical significance to the real world while a small effect size indicates limited practical application. So here's how we're gonna recap. All right, you have your pill that makes people smarter, and we're gonna say that the results are statistically significant, which is different than practical significance, meaning the results did not occur by chance, meaning that the drug caused the change in scores and not things like more sleep for the experimental group or more study time for the experimental group or having higher IQ people in the experimental group. So none of those things can found at the experiment. So there's statistical significance. However, if the average increase in score is really small, like only one point more than the control group, then the effect size is small and practical significance is limited meaning that a tiny increase in intelligence might not justify the cost of making the drug because no one's going to buy it, or it might not justify the cost of the side effects of the drug, or it might not justify the cost of taking a pill every day. So while the pill technically worked when, you know, there was a one point difference, it works, the results may be too small to matter for most people. This is the idea of effect size. Okay, on the other hand, if the effect size is a lot bigger, say there's a 15 point difference between the experimental and the control group, it would likely suggest a meaningful impact that could be generalized to the broader population. In other words, in this case, the drug would have practical significance to the real world. Lots of people would want to buy that drug if it truly made them smarter. Now, this is brand new this year, this, this whole idea of effect size. And so we don't know exactly or precisely how much the College Board wants you to know about this. So I'm gonna give you a, a general understanding, but it's not even the highest level understanding. This, this can be a little bit tricky, guys, okay? So there are many different ways to calculate effect size. One of them is called Cohen's D, which is a value that can range from zero to infinity. So the smaller the value, the smaller the effect size. The larger the value, the larger the effect size. Now, this won't be something you have to calculate. I, I assume College Board is going to give this information to you if it appears at all. But let me oversimplify what this means. The less the curves overlap, the greater the practical significance. The less the curves overlap, the greater the effect size. Or the more spread apart the curves are, the larger the effect size. So if we look at these curves, we have the curves practically overlapping, their means, their averages are very similar. This would be a very small effect size. So a small effect size is equal to D equals 0.2. A medium effect size is equal to D equals 0.5. And you can see that the means or the averages are a little bit more spread apart. And then a large effect size would be D is equal to or greater than 0.8. And you can see that the averages of these two curves here are farther and farther apart. And for each of these, the blue curve is the treatment group and the black curve is the control group. Now that's kind of the basic explanation. So taking this a step further, again, we don't know how much College Board's gonna ask you about this stuff. Here's the technical explanation. With a small effect size where D equals 0.2, 
about 58% of the people who take the drug, a little more than half the people who take the drug in the treatment group, will score higher than the average person who didn't take it. Compare that to a large effect size, about 79% of the people who take the drug in the treatment group will score higher than the average person who didn't take it. So to summarize everything we just said, small effect size is equal to D equals 0.2, medium 0.5, large 0.8. And this is what I was talking about on the last slide. This is the percentage of the experimental group above the mean of the control group. So I don't know how deep this is gonna get, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna show you this information so that you can learn it because it might show up. All right, so here's what you're probably gonna encounter in regards to effect size on maybe an FRQ. Let's say the effect size is small. Well, what does the small effect size indicate? And this is what you might have to respond to. The impact of the independent variable on the dependent variable is weak. So going back to our drug that's supposed to improve IQ example, the impact of the drug on test scores was weak. That's a small effect size. Or the difference in the averages between the experimental group who got the drug and the control group who did not is not large. Now note, it says, what does a small effect size indicate? Do not use the word small, use a synonym. So instead of saying the impact of the independent variable and the dependent variable was small, they want you to use a synonym to show that you actually know and you're not just kind of repeating and guessing. And same thing here. You're not saying small, you're just saying not large. So what would, or what does the large effect size indicate? just the opposite. The impact of the independent variable on the dependent variable was strong. Again, we're using a synonym for large. Or the impact of the drug on the test scores was strong. Or the difference in the means between the experimental group who got the drug and the control group who did not is not small. I think you might encounter something like this. It's not a guarantee, but if it does show up, I think it'll be more like this uh, rather than the complicated data. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I just wanted to provide it for you so you would be ready for it.